Tell your packets where to go. We're going to do that with APRS path settings, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, APRS, or the Automated Packet Reporting System, is a uh, tactical communications tool intended to share real-time information and short messages. I say it's a tactical communication system because really its purpose is for uh, local communications, for tracking resources such as vehicles, uh, so, uh, sending telemetry information from maybe um, uh, weather balloons or uh, weather stations, and also um, sharing objects, uh, local objects like repeaters or other informations on a map. Although there's an opportunity for distance communication with APRS, uh, DX work is really not the intended purpose of the automated packet reporting system. So in this video we're going to talk about um, three important concepts in APRS. Uh, first your call sign and um, SSIDs, uh, next uh, APRS path protocols, and finally uh, your APRS beacon rate. Uh, if, this is, if you're new to APRS and you just picked up this video first, you may want to check out my Introduction to APRS video. Uh, there's a link in the video description below, and that'll kind of give you an overview of the automated packet reporting system. Otherwise, um, if you're more interested in moving on to some of the more technical features of APRS, uh, we're going to take a look at first your um, call sign and uh, what an SSID is. Of course, you're going to need to use your call sign with your APRS activities. Uh, but if you're running multiple devices, say a home station, a mobile, trackers, or a handheld, uh, if any number of those devices are running at the same time, uh, you're going to run into potential conflicts within the APRS network. So to the rescue are SSIDs, or Secondary Station Identification. Uh, what the SSID is, is it's a numbered suffix that you put uh, attached to your call sign to help differentiate between uh, the different types of APRS assets you've got running on the network. So to break things down, um, the SSIDs go from 0 to 15. Uh, the first one, um, SSID of dash 0, or actually no SSID at all, would be just your plain call sign. And that's what we typically use for a home station. An SSID of 0 is going to be your home station. Next up are your SSIDs of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, these are reserved for digipeters. If you're using one of the smartphone apps, uh, you might want to use an SSID of dash 5. SSID of dash 7 is um, reserved for uh, handheld radios. Dash 9 is reserved for mobiles. Um, say if you've got one of the Kenwood mobile radios or one of the Yesu mobile radios. A 14 is for uh, truckers that may be using um, APRS on their over-the-road travels. And 15 is reserved for any other station or any other activity. So um, that's sort of a catch-all, any, um, any other thing. So if you wanted to add another digipeter or maybe a second weather station or, or another eye gate or something like that, uh, you could use the dash 15 for any of these numbers, any of these stations. Um, now the thing with the SSIDs is there are no um, hard and fast rules. These are only guidelines and uh, we use them to really um, give the, the user, the viewer of the map, sort of quick and easy identification of what kind of station um, and what kind of um, you know, uh, abilities the, the station has. So you can you know, look at a map and you can see a Dash 7, oh, that must be a handheld radio, or a Dash 9, he's a mobile. Really, so what things boil down to is, like I said, these are guidelines, so if you need additional SSIDs if you're putting a whole bunch of digipeters on the air, and I know a guy that's done that, uh, you can use those numbers for all of those digipeters. So the path is our um, route or direction, a distance um, an APRS packet takes within the network uh, before it expires. Yeah. In my introduction to APRS, I talked a little bit um, about um, how APRS is not a long distance communication method. So um, you don't want your packets to um, light up every map and digipeter within a 500 mile radius. You really want to try to keep them relatively confined to a local area where an eye gate will pick them up and then allow people to interact with you via the internet um, APRS data stream.
So in talking about paths, uh, we use a um, definition called the wide N-N designator, uh, where N is the number of hops that we want the packet to travel. A path of, of wide 1-1 will go one hop, and wide 2-2 will go two hops. Um, and in, in, in the N-N -N, um, definition, uh, the first N is the total number of hops we're defining, and then the second N, or number, is sort of like a counter that the um, digipeters will count down or decrement as it passes through the system. So when a, a Digipeter receives a um, APRS um, packet, um, it's going to look at the wide 2 2, and then it's going to take that second 2 and it's going to change it to a 1 uh, through the, the call sign substitution process and then um, send it along its merry way. A second uh, Digipeter will receive that packet, it's going to see the wide 2 1, it's going to um, change that 1 to a 0, it's going to send it along its way. And then um, when a third digipeter hears that packet, it says wide 2-0, it knows um, not to send the packet out and the packet's going to expire on its own, limited, limit, um, limiting its over-the-air travel. Remember, when we send out an APRS uh, packet, it's going to go out in all directions. So on its first hop, it might hit one or two wide digipeters. Then on a second hop, it could hit four or more digipeters. And by the time it gets to its third hop, you could be lighting up eight to 16 digipeters within the network. So we really want to be um, cognizant of that. And, and you pick a path that's going to uh, sort of control our packets to try to keep them within about about a 120 mile radius. And um, in today's day and age, you really don't need to go further than that. So when we set up our APRS path, we want to decide how far our, station, our packets are going to go. Uh, for a home station, we may only want to go out two or three hops. We really don't need to go more than three hops. So in our path designator, we all may only use a, a generic path of wide 2-2. Two -two. Um, if we want to um, further limit things a little bit more, we may use a um, named station. Like in my area, I've got a digipeter. Um, I'll use uh, W9SM-1 and then a comma and then a wide 2-2 two -two to go out an extra two hops. That'll be three hops total. If I only wanted my home station to go out two hops, I'll use a W9SM-1 to hit the wide digi and then a wide 2-1 so it goes up one hop after that. So for mobile stations, um, the, we're going to want to use a path of say wide 1-1 and then a comma and then a wide 2-2. That will get us out three hops. Uh, the wide 1-1 as the first hop in our in our digi path will try to activate either a low level and or a wide act digi. Uh, once it does that, uh, then it's got two hops with the wide 2-2 to further propagate through the system ensuring us a better chance of hitting an eye gate. Uh, with with uh, trackers and mobile stations, you know, we want at least two or three, but no more than three hops uh, to get the signal out because depending on its location and where it's going, it may not be within easy reach of an eye gate. So three hops is perfectly acceptable for our mobile stations. So to summarize, uh, home stations should either use a specific digi uh, call sign and then a comma wide 2-2 or 2-1. And then mobile stations should use the total generic path of wide 1-1 comma wide 2-2, uh, giving us either two or three hops. Anything more is overkill within the APRS system. Since APRS is an automatic protocol, you're going to need to set a uh, beacon rate or how, how often your station transmits for a given period of time. Uh, mobile or tracker stations are going to want to beacon more often than a home or fixed or stationary stations. Uh, and that, the reason is, is that a, a, a tracker or a mobile station's location is going to change more often, so um, you're going to want more frequent updates of their current location. Uh, there's a general expectation that you should be able to uh, turn on uh, the APRS map and get a general overview of all of the stations within the local network within about 10 minutes. So uh, with that being said, a lot of people recommend a beacon rate of 10 minutes or faster. You know, I, I think that um, for home stations and stationary objects, a beacon rate of um, 
10 minutes is plenty fast and may recommend 20 or 30 minute beacon rates depending on the on the type of object. I think it's it's you you know within a 60 minute time period your station should beacon at least twice. Uh, mobile stations or trackers on the other hand are going to want to have a much faster beacon rate. So if you're moving at highway speeds uh, beaconing once every minute is not out of the question. Uh, if for uh, slower uh, moving stations, say when I'm on my bicycle, I'm going to set the beacon rate of about once every two minutes. Uh, that's plenty, plenty fine for the speed I'm going. Also, I uh, want to conserve my battery life a little bit too with a handheld radio. Uh, pedestrians probably beacon once every five minutes considering how um, fast they are moving. Of course, um, this is a generalized rule and you might want to make um, exceptions to that at any time. For instance, uh, we've put trackers on uh, vehicles for a parade and we've had them beacon at every 30 seconds. Uh, even though they were quite slow moving, I wanted to be able to see a very precise location of where they were on the route. So that high beacon rate was um, perfectly acceptable for this short term duration. Uh, trackers like the uh, tiny track, the open track, and even the, the, the newer Kenwood radios have a feature in them called smart beaconing. And they will um, dynamically adjust their beacon rate uh, depending on how fast you're moving and also if there's direction changes in your, in your location. So um, at highway speeds they may beacon uh, more quickly. They may beacon if you turn a corner and also uh, they will slow their beaconing down um, if you stop and are idled or have the vehicle turned off for a longer period of time. Uh, this is a, a really nice feature of, of, of the tracker devices. So uh, if, you're in, if you're using them in moving vehicles, um, consider uh, activating the smart beaconing feature. But if you're using the, um, these uh, type of trackers and say like a bicycle or a pedestrian, you might be uh, wiser to turn the smart beaconing off and, and have um, a manually set a beacon rate uh, because they tend not work too well uh, when you're slower than say five or ten miles per hour. You might be in an area that um, may be uh, tough to get out of, maybe, maybe it's, it's um, difficult terrain or there's something that's um, uh, they are blocking, you know, where the digipeter just can't reach you. And second, um, digipeting is is kind of like a battle of the bands. So the um, loudest signal is always going to win and be um, digipeted by the wide area digipeters. So uh, low power stations, uh, moving stations, they're gonna, they have a more difficult time uh, getting into the um, to the wide digis. So uh, low level digis uh, help. Um, fill in those areas and give those um, low powered stations kind of a boost to get them reliably and more consistently into the network. Um, so what I've done is um, when I'm using my, my portable sometimes is to use what I call my beacon box. So the beacon box is just a two meter mobile radio. I've got it cooked up to um, an AGM battery and then I've got an older TNC in there that I've, I've programmed that'll listen for um, just my call sign um, and then um, digipeat that packet on. So it's only digipeating my packets uh, on into the um, into the APRS uh, network. And I, I found this really useful uh, one uh, winter when I was out uh, volunteering for a cross-country ski race. Uh, the terrain wasn't the best and I just had my little handheld radio, uh, but with the beacon box in my car and an antenna on the roof of the car, I was able to consistently get into the uh, APRS network even though I was in kind of a not so um, not so good location. And that's the really nice thing about APRS. Um, it's a disconnected system so you can add any number of resources or other um, temporary items in order to um, boost the, um, the network for um, a specific purpose or short-term need. Do you have questions or comments? What's your experience with APRS? Please leave them um, in the comments below. Uh, I do comb through the comments and answer them, and also your comment may end up in a, um, in a future video on APRS. 
For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. And also, uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Uh, check out some of the other videos that are recommended right alongside me here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe helps notify you when future videos are produced. And with that, uh, I'm Michael, KB9DBR. Thanks for watching. Have a great day in 73.